Hey guys, I just want to give you an update and uh, some more content. Um, if you remember the last video that I posted, we um, just had an overview of what the three-thirds process is um, as, a, as a very helpful um, way of organizing your time in your weekly group gathering. And uh, so to, uh, today, in this video, I want to uh, hone in on that first piece, the first third, the first um, third of your time, the part that um, has been called uh, looking back. Um, but before I get into that, let me remind you that uh, uh, we're reading together um, through a book called Organic Discipleship. This will especially help you with discipleship circles and uh, give you a lot of um, material that you can um, use and uh, with with others who are leading discipleship circles in your community group to help them care for uh, and disciple people that um, they're meeting with uh, for mutual care, mutual accountability, and so on in those smaller settings. Um, that, I believe, is going to help you to care for your group and to um, see discipleship happen uh, in your group. So remember that the first assignment for reading is is uh, going to be due by your February coaching meeting that we'll have, and uh, we'll talk about the reading. So come prepared to to do that and reflect on it. Um, I posted the reading assignments on the city. Uh, you can scroll down, uh, find that uh, probably pretty quickly. It take you just a few seconds to find. Um, remember to be spending. Let me let me uh, um, say this before we get into three thirds process. Remember. Uh, to be spending at least an hour each week uh, carefully reading and applying the Bible text that you're going to be discussing in community group that week, reading and applying it yourself uh, on your own, to your own heart and life, um, before you lead your group. Lead yourself, then lead others. And, 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 and you need to encourage your apprentice to do this as well. It might be helpful to, to meet up with your apprentice and do this. Um, if you have a discipleship circle, um, good idea to, to do the same. So taking the text that you would, you're would you going to be talking about in the larger setting and also talking about that same text in the smaller setting and doing more digging, um, being more honest and real together. Uh, that would be really wise. Let me encourage you to, as you open the text on your own, uh, an hour each week, to write down observations. I like to print out the text um, in a double pa a double line format and then scribble all over the paper and, and circle words and, and write little notes in the side just to help me uh, chew on it. Um, so do that. Uh, write, th write things down. Write down impressions, questions that you have. Search for answers to your questions. Um, take time to just dig and study and, and find wonderful things that God has in his word uh, for you. Pray through the text. Praise God. Um, ask God to transform you. Um, and then plan specific ways that you want to obey. Um, uh, ask God to guide you in that way. Share your goals. If you make some goals, share those goals with your community group, maybe with your discipleship circle especially, and get your apprentice into this stuff as well. Um, coach them, teach them how to do this and, and that they ought to. All right, now I want to talk three-thirds process. I'm going to spend a few minutes here honing in on the first chunk. So if you break down your time in your gathering into three uh, sections of time, three time, uh, sections of equal time, the first section is called looking back. That's where we look back on the past week um, and, and we prepare to dig into scripture. So there are uh, four parts to looking back. That is care, worship, accountability, and vision casting. So we're going to talk about all four of those. Um, the outline of this whole process, the three-thirds process, if you're not, uh, maybe uh, forget what it is I'm talking about, um, it's all posted. You can find this material posted on the city in the community group leaders uh, page, um, anchored at the top in a post. 
Uh, the title of that post is called Resources. A bunch of stuff on there. This is all on there. Um, the, the basic format, you can print that off. You can take it with you to group. You can plug uh, the community group discussion questions that I create every week right into that second third of the three thirds, the, the look up portions. So tonight, let's look at the look back portion. Um, this should take, um, you know, I suggest about 30 minutes. Of course, you can scale that down for discipleship circles uh, or for a discovery Bible study that you're um, doing with a, with a household of people who are far from God and are maybe open to, to, to learning more about Jesus that you might do. The three-thirds process is very helpful that you can translate into almost any setting or context. So, and this is something that you uh, can then eventually have other people in your community group lead uh, these sections. You can delegate these things to, to others, especially as you're wanting to train them uh, uh, to disciple others and, and training them to train others um, um, with lost people or in the discipleship circle or if they were to lead a community group sometime in the future as well. So there you go. Uh, the first piece of look back is called care. Um, maybe roughly 10 minutes. Um, this is uh, not a, uh, a long, drawn-out thing. Uh, it might be as simple as, how was your week? How are you doing? And just letting conversation happen. If you're, if you're squashed on time, you can leave this part out. And here's why. Uh, you may have just spent a, a good 15 minutes uh, with people already doing this. Already asking each other how their week's been. Uh, they've been telling each other the how busy it was, or um, certain stressors in their week, and or maybe something that was amazing that happened. They're already doing that. There's already mutual care often occurring in that way ahead of time. If that's the case, you need to be uh, attentive to that time, and uh, as a leader, to be attentive to where your people are, how they need to be cared for, uh, encouraged, uh, what what things you need to celebrate. Um, in the group and, and, and how you can um, help them. Um, so, uh, the, but if you can do it, open up the time with how are you doing, maybe doing highs and lows. I mentioned this last time, uh, your high point of the week, your low point of the week. These are bullet, bullet points. You need to remind your people that these are not long stories. If you're finding that it's beginning to dominate the time, you may either delete it um, and, and do it in other ways or move it to the very last thing that you do in the entire uh, gathering. That way people can talk as much as they need to um, and uh, it won't sabotage the other pieces that you need to get to uh, when you gather. Uh, this, again, our groups are not primarily uh, support groups uh, even though we need to support one another. This is on-the-spot rejoicing as well as care and encouragement. Um, uh, those things are encouraged, but but let's keep this thing moving when we get to this when we start with this care piece. Allow people in the group to encourage one another without preaching a sermon or getting long-winded or sidetracked. We got to keep it moving. A discern as people share how they're doing, how they need to be shepherded, how they need to be followed up. Encourage people. To follow up with one another. That's uh, part of the one another's of the New Testament that we're um, wanting to teach people to, to own and to walk in. If your group is really large, uh, you can break it smaller uh, at, this, at this point in the care piece. You could break it down into the discipleship circles for this piece. And by the way, if people are in discipleship circles, uh, that's another reason why you may be able to uh, simply skip this piece um, or shorten it greatly. Um, so that's that's an encouragement to you. If your meal went late, like I said, you may consider skipping this. Uh, but if you can keep it, uh, do it. And I would, I would encourage you to consider it as a as a default part of your time together um, and only remove it um, when needed. Uh, keep your time plan. Not everyone needs to share every week. You could simply call on some people. 
You could just have it an open-ended question of how are you doing, but you need to discern whether or not it's just going to be the same three people telling a long story. And you've got to keep it moving and not let three people dominate. So lots of flexibility, lots of ways you can do it, uh, but be discerning. Follow up when needed. Um, encourage discipleship circle leaders to, to follow up with the people in their circles. Uh, some issues are deeper and warrant more than a passing glance. Uh, maybe um, if somebody shares something, say, hey, I'd love to talk with you more about that um, afterwards tonight. Maybe we could set up a, a time to, to meet up and to open up some scripture and pray together uh, over that. That's something that uh, you could do. Uh, move this part uh, to the very end of your time together if needed as well. So I've said enough on that. So that's the first piece. The second piece is worship. Here's where you, uh, you've you dealt with uh, um, issues of the day, of the week. You're helping people kind of set those aside so we can hone in and focus ourselves on God and prepare ourselves to hear his word and respond to it. So the worship piece um, of course, all of life is to be worshipped, but this is, um, you know, intentional uh, prayer, singing, things to help gear our hearts and our minds. Your goal is to get our heart on Christ, trained on the majesty of God and on the gospel, prepared to hear from the word of God. That's your goal. When you prep for community group, you, you ought to prepare this piece. This is one of those things that you need to prepare. Pick out a psalm to read. Uh, that would be fitting for what people are, are going through, perhaps. Um, I may at some point post a list. You can find these online pretty easily. A list of the different kinds of psalms that are, that are, that are there in Scripture for, for different needs or different occasions. And were written for different occasions. Um, uh, there's different emotions in the psalms. So you can discern where your people are at and use those psalms. As a, as a means of worship. You could also recruit musicians in your group to bring instruments every week, to, to sing a song. You, you may need to put one person in your group in charge of this piece of the week, to, to pick a song every week and to lead it each week maybe. Or as someone who would be generally good at picking appropriate biblical and worshipful songs to sing. Uh, if people aren't familiar with it, that person would need to bring song sheets um, for others to, to see and to be able to follow along and, and sing. Um, you don't need, you don't have to do singing, but I'd encourage it. It's a good um, creative thing to do, and uh, it's a normal means that God uses. And uh, read Ephesians 5, uh, uh, Colossians 3, that we should be singing uh, to and with one another. Um, spiritual songs. So there you go. Um, your group may find that awkward, but others in your group uh, may love it. So I'll let you figure that out. Remember that our main job is to lead people to worship God more deeply in all of life. And, and obedience flows out of worship. So this piece is helpful in that way. If you had one part of the three-thirds process to leave out for time constraints, or uh, especially in a discipleship circle setting, uh, this, this piece may not fit. You probably aren't, aren't going to sing in a discipleship circle. Maybe you will, but that uh, often probably not. Or in leading maybe a discovery Bible study with a group of people who are far from God uh, that you've connected with and, and are walking uh, through portions of scripture with, you may not uh, fully do this piece to this degree. If time is short, or especially in discipleship circle, or in a Bible study with new, with new or, or unbelievers, you may simply pray, have an opening prayer. That could be this piece. So consider that. But, but do more if you can. So that's the worship piece. Accountability. So this is uh, one that you probably find strange <laughs> or um, yeah, haven't maybe seen done in this setting, in a small group setting, a community group setting. Um, it's something that uh, many of us have, have not uh, actively uh, practiced in, in community groups, but, but I see the value in it. Um, part of uh, the Great Commission is that we teach uh, 
people to observe, to do, not just to know all that he commanded, but to also uh, observe, to be obedient to him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, um, maybe it's verse 11, says that uh, we're to exhort one another, we're to encourage one another to love in good deeds, good deeds. We're to, we're, to, we're to check in with each other on these things. That's what loving accountability is. If you're not doing it in your group, start this week. Now, you'll probably get some pushback um, from some people uh, when they realize that you're checking in and people are checking in with each other on the goals that they made the previous week. Um, you might get um, either the antinomian response that this is legalism, um, but but it's not. Jesus said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commands," and we're commanded in Hebrews four eleven and twelve to to do this. So uh, there's that. Um, one of this is maybe one of the more neglected parts of biblical discipleship. Uh, and it's one of the most important pieces of the entire process that we do, that we want to do in our community groups, except, of course, reading the Bible. That, that one wins. Um, celebrate, though, in, in this process, celebrate people's obedience to God. Do that. Um, even small obediences. If they said, I want to sh share the gospel with three people this week. I've got people uh, that God's put around me or, or, or people out, out in Morgantown that I want to meet. Um, I want to share the gospel with three people this week. Cool. Awesome goal. If they come back and they say, well, I only shared the gospel with one. Um, that's something to celebrate. right? We're not going to guilt them, um, but we do, we do want to celebrate that and challenge them to, to, to press on. We need to help people, though, to be obedient. Celebrate obedience help people be obedient, and celebrate even small progress. If they made a goal of sharing their story of how Jesus changed their life with three people, like I said, uh, but they only shared with one, celebrate the win. If someone read the Bible three times that week, that may be progress from having not done it at all before. Help them to, to set good goals. Uh, challenge the idol that they're being disobedient to Jesus. If you see patterns of either not even making goals or, or making goals, but not following through with them, don't allow them to heap up excuses week after week after week. I was busy. It's too busy. Something came up. I had to go see a movie. I had too many uh, games to play. You know, these kind of things. Um, Warn the idol. Uh, look for patterns of idleness. Um, but, but not everybody is going to fall into that. And be patient with people. Challenge them. Be patient. All right, so that's all I have for tonight. Oh, vision casting. One more piece. I almost forgot. So the vision ca uh, casting piece, um, we want, uh, really, you got to think about this in terms of what the outcome of our faith is that we're not that God has not just simply made us um, buckets to to retain knowledge of God, but that we become wells overflowing. The joy that we have in Christ is one that will flow out. Um, we're a kingdom of priests. Um, we're a people of His own possession, and 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 the outflow of that is mission. And so. Uh, we want to cast vision that we are uh, aiming to be a healthy discipleship community on mission. Any ways that you can hit those constantly, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, verses that attend to those things, especially on the mission piece, because that's that's the that's sort of the sharp um, end of of the spear, as it were, in the trajectory of of what what our Christian life is. As we exalt God, as we enjoy His glory, it necessarily results in all of life being conformed around Christ and being uh, obedient to take the gospel. So let, let's do that. Uh, let's, let's continue to drip vision, cast vision 
week after week after week, um, especially in this piece just before you open up Scripture. Well, I'm so thankful to hear how many of you are already getting into discipleship circles for deeper joy in God. Super excited about that. Excited to hear stories of of God at work as we help the disciples walk in joyful and passionate obedience to Jesus. Real excited to hear some stories as those uh, begin to take shape. I can't wait to hear how people are seeking to multiply disciples in our city as you train them in the three circles method of sharing the gospel or the uh, the method of um, telling your story with the gospel in it in under a minute um, or ways that you're uh, seeking um, uh, connecting points in the city and ways that you can do micro mission to to uh, find those connections to, to share the gospel and make disciples. I'm praying for each of you. Uh, know that. I, I do that con- uh, constantly. Let me know how I can help you help the people of God who are entrusted to your oversight. Uh, see you guys.